Being fast in sim racing is a consequence of control, confidence and consistency. We can only exert precision behind the wheel if we feel at home in the vehicle we are driving. And only if we have a clear, reliable sense of the limit, we can repeat our best lap after lap after lap. So for me, the biggest annoyance about Le Mans Ultimate is not so much the technical problems such as a first load up with, for example, the notoriously laggy user interface, agonizing slow loading times, or my new favorite, a sudden lack of engine sound. That's not cool, but I can handle that, knowing that restarting the game remedies or at least mitigates most of these quirks. What really bugs me is the lackluster FFB where it matters most. Namely, that driving at the limit still feels strangely numb, muted and vague. In other words, there is not enough differentiated information and signals about the condition of the tires transmitted to my hands. Even when they are warm and in the optimal range, I don't really feel how much grip I have left and where the limit actually is. The same applies to braking and here it is perhaps even more critical, especially with the LMDHs that do not have ABS, it's essential to know and feel when the tires lock up. Unfortunately, the game gives me too few tangible indicators to feel comfortable and ride consistently. Sure, there is this LED stripe in the cockpit that shows me that or how the tires are locking, but come on, that's really no substitute for the FFB, which is supposed to convey this into my hands. If now LMU was a lost cause, I wouldn't care and simply uninstall the game. But it's not. LMU already does a lot of things very well, even excels in some and has a lot of potential that just needs to be exploited. So that's why I sat down, tweaked the dials and tried to improve the FFB at the limit to actually be able to operate at it. Here are my results and findings. With my default settings in the SimiCube True Drive and the Heusingfeld Smart Control, when I hit the brakes in LMU, I don't have a good sense of how close I am to the limit of the tires, that is, before the lockup. Instead, it mostly feels like a gamble or a shot in the dark, resulting in occasional lockups or even spins. So I now went into my pedals driver and increased the overall brake force from 32 to 38 kilograms. 30 to 33 is what I'm usually using for the other sims I play like AMS2, AC, ACC. Thus, I simply have to apply more physical strength to reach the maximum output. And that also, of course, results in more leeway in-game. This, in fact, for me, is the most important measure here, as it is the basis for all additional in-game tweaks. Into the settings, controls and FFB. First off, there is the steering torque capacity. Set this to the actual capacity of your wheelbase. Second, the force feedback strength. And, well, you can actually set this from 0 to 200% for the overall force feedback intensity in the game. When I first played LMU, I started around 40%, which is the value I also choose for AMS2 and Assetto Corsa. But that actually doesn't feel very powerful, let alone detailed here in LMU. So now, depending on the car and my, let's say, daily form, I've arrived at 80 to 100%. And then there also is the force feedback smoothing. Well, but don't get confused by the description, which says that it smoothened the force feedback for a better feel. Well, not necessarily. The truth is that a value of zero is the actual, the raw and true feel without any filters. Everything above, and you can set this from zero to nine, adds increasingly more smoothing filters. Until nine really feels, well, smoothed out, polished, and again, pretty numb. My personal setting here is zero or one, but like so often, 
This, of course, is personal preference, depending on your personal style, hardware, and the car that you're driving. Next up, we have the car setup menu in-game, of course. We will take a closer look to two values, namely the brake bias and the maximum pedal force. The latter here is the more important value because it determines how hard the brakes bite when you hit the pedal. So in my case, the default value of 120 kilos or 100% is way too much. I lowered that value down to 70 or 80% to give me a good or at least a bit more feel and enough leeway to prevent locking. In combination with the brake bias, which could be set further to the rear, the overall braking feel can be further improved. Audio is another category with some potential. The default onboard volume value sits at 90%. You may increase that to 100, but the caveat is that this slider just works as a general volume slider. There is no differentiation between, let's say, the engine sound, the mechanical sound, the suspension sound, and of course, the tires. Nevertheless, it can make a slight difference to increase that volume to the max. A request to the developers, please include more relevant sliders and values to differentiate between the different parts of the car that make noise. Certainly, all these tweaks and little optimizations do not prevent me from still making mistakes, sometimes pretty dumb ones, but at least I feel better now when doing them. Anyways, I just wanted to share my insights regarding a better FFB feel at the limit with you. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Have a good time. Enjoy your racing. Until the next one. Bye-bye.